I'm ready. Hello, and welcome to the American Indian College Fund um, module program. Today, we are doing module two, loans and credit. And we'd like to thank the Native American Agriculture Fund for funding these modules. On our project team is Dr. Ruby Ward. She is an economics professor at Utah State University. I am Vicki Hebb. I am a member of the Cheyenne River um, Sioux Tribe in um, South Dakota. And I'm also on faculty at the University of Nevada, Reno. And not able to join us today, but a huge part of our team is Trent Tigerstrom, who's Associate Director of Tribal Extension at the University of Arizona. Hey, Ruby, how you doing today? Good. So as Vicki said, we're happy to be here. And this is this is module two, but loans and credit, but this is part of a four module series. And so we also have tips for starting a new business. Um, after this one is the MyFi app. It's a free app that's available on Google Play and also the Apple Store and um, financial growth and management. So together, these are kind of the foundational and building blocks to really kind of have the business side and the financial side of your business more under control and giving you more um, information. The key concepts we're going to cover today is what is included in an interest rate, effects of credit scores and interest rates on loans, and we'll show you kind of what these are, grants and lo loan programs available, and then credit score information and sources for help. So we are, as we go through and you start to see what a credit score is, you're going to wonder what is sources for help, but just know that at the end, Vicki has some great resources that she'll show you that you can get started with. And like we always say, don't get overwhelmed by this information. This is meant to give you an overview and a step-by-step -step, um, so that starting a business is manageable. So interest rates, um, you've heard of an interest rate, but what really is an interest rate? So an interest rate has three components, time, inflation, and risk. Time and inflation are the same for everybody. So risk is the one factor why you have a different interest rate than somebody else does. It's based on the personal risk that you're perceived. Time is because if you're going to use somebody else's money, they can't use it until you give it back to them. And so because they have to wait to use their money, they wanna be compensated for that. Or, um, and then inflation is, you've seen recently, you know, how prices are going up. In general, that's inflation. And so by the time you give them their money back, it's not gonna be able to buy as many things as it did before while you were using their money because all the prices have gone up while you used it. And so that's the time and inflation. So they wanna be compensated for both of those. That's general economy type stuff. And so it's the same for everybody because it's just how the economy is working. But the risk is, again, your personal information. So if you're a bigger risk, there's a chance of no repayment. Then the bigger the cost of interest is going to be because whoever's lending you that money, if there's a chance they're not going to get it back or not get all of it back, they're going to want to get back more to be able to, or they don't want to lend to you, they'd rather lend to somebody else. And so the way that this does works is it's through the interest rate. And so it becomes a higher interest rate. And if you're a bigger risk, the bank's going to charge you a higher interest rate, and that's going to cost you more to use that money. And all of this, though, still sounds pretty theoretical. And what does this really mean? So we want to get into some examples and show you what this means and why these things are important. So here's an extreme example. <laughs> yes, we always giggle at this one, don't we? So this is a really extreme example of a um, payday loan. Isn't that correct? Yes. This is from the Utah Payday Lender. Um, and it basically just shows in one day on $100, you're paying $10 on that $100 in one day. That is 522% interest. That is insane. Yeah, so actually this was for a seven day. It was for one week. But the lowest one they found was $10 for that seven days. But the highest they found oh. was $50 for the seven days. And so this is just Utah. And I'm, but I'm sure there's similar experiences in other states. But these are incredibly high. And so this is the extreme of really high risk is a payday loan. And so really, really, really high interest rates. And once you get into them, it's really hard to get out of them because of such the high interest rates. So part of what you wanna do is just keep yourself out of payday loans. And so we're gonna go through some other things. 
So a credit score, you've probably heard of a credit score. You know, a lot of um, credit card companies advertise and, you know, talk about credit scores. So they range. And so a good credit score is higher. So the 720 to 850 is a good credit, really good credit score. And then they go down and then 500 to 589 is a really poor credit score and the range across. And so it's a measure of risk. So if you are got a high credit score, you're less risk than your interest rate um, is lower. And in this case, we pulled some, some examples from Arizona a few years ago was 3.6%. And then with the lowest credit score, it was um, almost 17%. And so you can see that that, that space between those, yeah. between the 3.6 and the 17, that's based upon that personal risk. So everything with the time and inflation was encapsulated in that 3.6% plus a little bit of risk. But so the rest of it going up to that 17%, that's all based upon the personal borrowers and how their the lender is perceiving the risk of them. But I think it still is really hard and difficult for most people's minds to see those numbers and know what they mean, because this is still just a lot of numbers. So let's- yeah. And also I'd like to point out, unfortunately your credit score can actually go even farther lower than this than 500. So we are just doing this within you know this range, but it is not uncommon to have an even lower credit score. And what is the lowest you can have? I don't really know, but there's also cutoffs and that the cutoff varies with different lending institutions on where they'll lend you money. So mm, below certain rates, sense. you might not be able to get any funding. So this is just giving you kind of a range of those. So here's an example that Vicki and I came up with. If you're starting up a business and you wanted to borrow $10,000, we put it at seven years because a lot of times business startup loans need a little bit of time to get those um, paid back. And so seven years, $10,000 is what you're borrowing. So we have those interest rates and those credit score ranges that we had from before from the 4.3%. Actually, I think these are a little bit different than was on the thing before, but so this rate, this example goes from 4.3% up to 19.3%. So we've got about a 15 point spread in between those based on risk. And so now we have the monthly payment listed. So it's a little bit easier to comprehend what this interest rate means because now we can see a hundred and just under $140 to just under $220. So we've got a big spread there yeah. but I um, and that's about $80 but I think it still is really hard to kind of get your mind wrapped around what might this mean for my business so let's do a little bit more so here I just um, converted those payments into paid each year because you're going to make 12 payments per year so this is going to be those payments and you can see now that on that $10,000 loan with really good credit is they're gonna be paying $1,000 less than the people that are down in this range every year. And wow, this, and you know, if you think of that in terms of a startup, that's $1,000 right there. That could go to something else, equipment, mm -hmm. um, you know. It could also make the difference between the business being able to make their payments and not make their payments, mm -hmm. you know, depending on how they do. Um, but it's gonna be a lot harder to cover that extra thousand dollars. Definitely. I also thought that sometimes just dollars in general are harder for some people's minds to kind of look at. And so if you're work, thinking about your own business or also you're working with somebody else, then this sometimes putting these dollars into something that has more meaning to you can be helpful to just kind of figure out what that means. And so in this case, I put them in terms of hours worked. And so um, and I used a $17 per hour um, rate. And so the monthly payment, $138, means at $17 an hour, you'd have to work eight hours. And then that gets a little bit, you drop down, it's another hour, not quite, you know, and then you come down here, it's another hour, another couple hours here, we're getting a little bit bigger. See, then when we get into these ranges, see, we're getting bigger jumps. Like from here to here was a lot bigger jump. And so they're mm -hmm. saying this, you know, you put it into a category that you're pretty risky. And so down here, you've got to work 12 and 13 hours. And so 13 to eight, that's five extra hours a month. 
And sometimes, well, that's just five hours, but this is five hours for one thing for one $10,000 loan. And also five compared to eight, that's a lot of extra time just because of your interest rate compared to, because five is what, like two thirds of the $8. If we um, look at that per year, and so um, this is just the hours you'd work per year. 97 per year um, with good credit and then 154 with bad. So that's a difference of 56 hours. So the 56 hours seems a lot more meaningful. You know what I mean? That's over a week of your time. And then here you can see that that paid each year, it's almost $1,000 more that you're gonna pay. And that actually works out to be 56% more that you're paying with um, because of just that per, that risk, the perceived risk. That's so significant. And this is such a great example because there's so much effort and um, time um, involved in doing a startup. And those are hours that could be, you know, putting your energy focused elsewhere into your business or back into your family. Yeah. And this was a $10,000 loan. And so some businesses are going to start up with higher loans than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. If this was a $50,000 loan, that would be 560 hours um, or five times five would be uh, 250 hours. So you start mm -hmm. to think about how many, you know, you're starting to, as you, so as these things start to build up or you have more and more different types of loans or higher amounts and stuff, it can get even worse. So um So here, um, what about the whole loan? And so I did it over the whole life of the loan. So the whole seven years. And I think that it's really interesting to look here in this total paid because that really is what should be meaningful because that's the amount of money that you've got to pay back. Remember you've $10,000 you had to pay back just because that's what you borrowed. Everything above the 10,000 is your interest. And so that's why we see the 11,602 here and then that 1602 was everything above the $10,000. And so here at this 4.3%, most of what you're paying back is that original 10,000 that you borrowed. And we've got about 16% overall that we're paying in interest. Down here with the lowest credit score that we have on this range, it's 18,000. So in addition to that $10,000, you're paying back another 8,311 in interest. And so that's 83% of that $10,000. Yeah. And you're gonna pay an additional 83% in interest. Where up here, you are only gonna pay an additional 16% in interest. And the difference- yeah, that's phenomenal because you're almost paying, you know, um, $2 for every dollar that you have just borrowed. Mm -hmm. And so over time, it's that interest. And so sometimes, you know, you look at it here and well, it's really extreme, but I think when you just pull out the interest and see what that credit score is doing, the part of it that's it's affecting the, credit, the interest rate, you can really see that this is 419, over 400% higher with those, the bad credit. Um, but the whole loan is 58% more. And that's because wow. the $10,000 is the same for everybody. You've got to pay back that $10,000 that you borrowed. It's that interest and that risk that's causing the rest. So if you're working with somebody else, again, converting it into something that's meaningful for them can sometimes yeah. make a bigger difference because sometimes this is more money, but oh, well, I've got to pay more money. It just takes more money. And it's hard to put that in perspective. But when you look over here, over the just in interest, you're going to pay for you're going to have to work 400 more hours at $17 an hour with the higher interest than the lower interest. And so that can start to become more meaningful. And if you're um, working with a business like selling something, then instead of doing hours here, you could actually put in something that you're selling. So how many more of whatever of our item you're selling do you have to sell to just be able to make those payments? And that can be really powerful too. And we'll tell you about the next modules at the end of this, but we'll actually, in a future module, you can learn how to calculate your own numbers and your own situations. 
Yeah, and I just want to point out on this slide, this is still only $10,000 and we're at 394 hours to pay for that interest if you have bad credit. Imagine doing, you know, just two times that. You're just going to really honestly run out of hours to be able to work to pay it off. So, I mean, I think you have to be mindful of that. Time is a big factor here. Yeah. Okay, so I wanted to find some sources of grants and programs for you guys. But first, let's start with this. Ruby, can you tell us the difference of a grant and a loan? So a loan is something that you have, it's a contract that you set up. And you're basically promising that if they give you so much money that you will give them back, you'll make payments on that money and it'll be the original loan amount plus the interest. So all the numbers and stuff that we are looking at, that was for loans. You pay back everything plus the interest. A grant is something that you're um, telling somebody you want to do something that they're willing to fund um, because they think it's a good idea. And so grants, normally you don't have to pay a grant back, but a loan you do have to pay back. Okay, thank you. Now, in this list, it is a combination of both. The first, a uh, great resource is Small Business Association. Um, they have both loans and grants. Um, I also want to point out that almost all of these have a special um, arm within their organization that is specifically for Native Americans. Um, this is one of the benefits of being Native American. Often you can get a startup grants for your business. Um, we were talking about this earlier, Ruby. Is it a lot of work? Probably. Um, <laughs> we'll discuss this a little more on the next slide. But um, with that, you know, the hard work pays off. The next one is a loan. This is through the USDA Farm Service Agency. Um, this will probably be your lowest interest rate loan that you will ever find. And again, we'll get into that a little bit more on the next slide. Um, One thing, um, Vicki, I just wanted to interrupt a minute. So USDA Farm Service Agency, these are for agriculture loans. And so these are normally, you know, things that you're doing with agriculture. So farming, ranching, they can get a little bit into, I think, processing and stuff, but they have restrictions. Small Business Administration um, loans and grants, those are for all other types of businesses. And so if you, depending on your type of business, FSA is gonna be your source if it's agriculture related, SBA will be your source if it's not. Yes, excellent point. The next one is business resources for Native American entrepreneurs. Um, this one also is just gonna be for, you know, your general business startup. The next one is the IDRS ACORN project. Um, this is small business grants for Native Americans. Um, with the next one being the National Center for American Indian Enterprise. Um, this one is a very comprehensive organization and they're dedicated to not only giving grants out, but for helping you do a business plan, um, any kind of business planning that you might need, they offer it there. Um, First Nations Grant Seeker Resources. This is from First Nations. Um, they'll do like um, grants to organizations as well, um, but they do have a resource for giving grants to Native Americans um, starting a business. Um, there's also the National Congress of American Indians. They have a grant program through them. Um, another one, and this one is just ag related, but the Intertribal Agriculture Council has a CDFI. And the CDFI is called Occupaton, and they will give grants um, to ag producers. So there's many resources out there. I'm sure I didn't get them all, but know that there is help out there in not only planning it, but in you know hopefully getting one of those grants so that um, this startup isn't quite as complicated as it might be. Okay. So um, all of these are gonna have their own little details. And so the devil is in the details with stuff like this. And as Vicki said, all of them are gonna take time. You're gonna to have to go through hoops. It's probably not gonna be a one shot thing where you give them everything and they tell you an answer. It's probably, you may have to go back multiple times and you know different things. And so we can't go over everything and all the little details of all these programs because there, you know, there's even more that we haven't included here. But this is just a list to get you started. And I would just go on to all their websites start exploring, see what, you know, in general, they want to fund, what their requirements are, you know, other types of things. When 
can you um, apply for them? Is it any time? Is it one time a year? You know mm -hmm. what I'm just kind of go point. through there and find some um, details on them. That is a great point, Ruby. On a lot of these, there's a deadline. So you need to be aware of that deadline because also the application is going to be probably very extensive. Yep. Okay, so this is the one I'm referring to. So this is the USDA FSA loan. Again, it's probably going to be your best interest rate, um, even better than if you had perfect a perfect credit score. But again, this is only ag related. So um, on this one, um, there is a lot of paperwork, um, but that interest rate right there is probably the difference of you spending, well, let's look at the hours of interest right here, Ruby. It's a difference of just, you know, already one work week. I mean, so, and that's just on $10,000. So, I mean, I think that, um, you know, well, and that's just if work. you have really good credit. So Vicki's saying, you know, if you have good credit here, then your hours of interest over that loan is going to be 94 hours. But with the FSA, you're even better than that. So you're only going to have to work 54 hours. So that's a 40 hour difference. But FSA may also borrow to you if you're down in some of these ranges. You know what I yes. mean? And so that can be even a more dramatic difference. So I think Vicki and I have both heard people that said, well, I started to use FSA, but it was just taking so much time and they wanted so many different things that I decided it wasn't worth it because I, I don't have hours to put into that. And we're always thinking in the back of our mind, well, yes, you do, because you have more yeah, exactly. hours later on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just went from the FSA to the good credit score. Look at the difference of 54 to 489. I mean, that's probably what a thousand percent difference. So, um, I mean, I think that everything worthwhile takes hard work. I will tell you in our situation, we switched to FSA about three years ago. All the paperwork I'm seeing, and we're in our, about our third year now, is paying off. It's helping me. It's helping um, me be a better bookkeeper because, you know, with FSA, you make sure and you have, you know, all all of your supplements, your whole, basically your whole business plan, because you're giving all your numbers. If a cow dies, you let them know, you always know where you're at. And for me, that always being in the back of my mind helps me daily make better decisions for our ranch. And if you're working with, um, you know, as a consultant, you know, with some other businesses and stuff that are trying to get started and stuff, and that's part of what you do, Illustrating some things like this, if they're resistant to use some of these other sources of credit that takes extra time, can be a way to just say, hey, it's worth it for you. I know that it's going to take some time, but, you know, it's worth it for you in the end. And so just to kind of give people, so don't, you don't have to say, just trust me, just trust me, it'll be good. <laughs> but you can actually kind of show them some of the information. Absolutely. Okay, so working on your credit scores. So we talked earlier, um, there's such a thing as having bad credit and no credit. So um, if you're younger or if you're working with a younger um, person that has an established credit, it's actually a good time for them to establish credit right now um, with a small business loan. Um, even, you know, let's say they're making jam, even just the, you know, $300 to get an industrial mixer and then you're starting to get your credit score. So um, there are programs to help you with your credit score. I have only listed the ones that are credible on here. Um, I think if there's one takeaway on your credit score, it's to keep an eye on it constantly. Um, there's no quick fix for your credit score. However, in this day and age, I know I log on to my Discover account um, weekly and my credit score pops up. It's just right there. And I'm pretty sure many of the other websites um, where credit cards have that as well. We do want to warn you that there are many out there that um, say there's a magic fix for your credit score and there is not. <laughs> this is a, you know, you build your credit score or you fix your credit score over time by being consistent with your payments and timely with your payments. And that is what creates a good credit score. Yeah, and sometimes um, if there's some things on your credit report that aren't are incorrect, 
then sometimes just going through the effort and the work to get rid of those things to tell the companies and say, hey, this is incorrect. I don't do, I don't, don't owe this anymore. Can you take this off my credit report? You know, and so there are some things that can help you with that, but it's um, what Vicki just said, these are great resources. We can't go into everything in this little short module, but it's what we do wanna give you is just resources that you can um, check into and kind of find some answers for yourself. We wanna put you more in control of the process that give you starting points so that you're not just floundering around trying to figure out where to look for anything. So I think it would be good to check some of these out, whether it's for yourself or with your consulting with other businesses again, to, just to know what some of them do. Um, you can also establish your credit by getting a um, credit card and then paying it off every month. However, you need to be careful with that. You know what I mean? And you really have to keep track of what you're putting onto it so you can pay it off every month. You know, almost treat it like a checkbook. You know what I mean? That I have to pay cash for these things because you've got to have that cash available. Um, but it can work there. Also, if you have, I've heard of situations, every lending institution is different. I've heard of situations where if you can work with an actual person at some of them, rather than it just goes into, you know, like a system mm -hmm. and the computers make the decisions, that if a lot of your credit, um, bad credit is because of like one health issue that you've been paying off over time, but it's just sitting there on your credit report because you owe it, that sometimes they will do things and disregard that one thing. And then, you know what I mean, work with you on that too. So every lender is a little bit different. I think it's also worth talking to more than one person, even if you don't use all the resources that Vicki showed you for, that might have lower or um, credit rates or um, also uh, have grants that you don't have to pay back. I think even like looking at different lending institutions within your area, you know, sometimes, you know, maybe one bank will charge you a higher interest rate than another bank. Maybe um, a, a credit union will be willing to loan you a small amount of money so you can establish your credit where you couldn't get that from a bank. And so just kind of, it's not an overnight process, but it is something that you can see that's really valuable to yourself and to your business. And so it's worth taking some time. And I think I want to point out as an example, as Ruby just said, but the communication is key here. Just talk to who you're trying to learn from. It's very common for Native Americans to have a healthcare issue and IHS does not uh, pay timely on that bill. And so it gets reflected on yours. And so this is a very specific example of exactly what Ruby's talking about with health, but it's not, I mean, it's very common for everyone as well. So, um, so here's our take home messages. Lower credit scores mean higher interest rates. Higher interest rates means it's gonna pay more. Um, you're either gonna have to work more hours to pay for it. It's harder to make your business profitable. And it may be worth it to spend some time on some of those other sources of funding that may have more effort on your part to get them, but it's worth it in the end for you. So every business is different, every situation is different. So that's why it's important to develop your own plan, and kind of your own, and part of that plan is your own financing plan. So last week um, we talked about tips for starting a new business that really kind of gave you some resources for starting and developing your business plan. And then today we talked about loans and credits. So it's really kind of some tips and information on creating your financial plan or the start of it. Like, how am I gonna, think about financing my business. And we're going to, the next couple of um, modules is going to go into more details on ways that you can actually do calculations on that financial plan. So this week was the overview. You need to kind of know the overview concepts before we could go too far. Next week is going to be the MyFi app, which is a free app on Google Play and the Apple Store. And so it's going to allow you to calculate these loan payments in terms of whatever interest rate or terms or anything you provide. So if you find inf different information, you can start putting that in. And then for the financial growth and management is where you're gonna put your whole financial plan back together. And so kind of understand how that works together. And we've got some tools and tips and tricks for that too. So this is just um, together, it's really just give you some resources either for your own business plans or for helping somebody else create their business plans, both the financial and just the business plan in general. 
and thank All you. Right. Yes, we want to. Yes, we want to thank you for spending time with us today. We hope this helps um, begin your journey with credit and finance. I can't. I can't get it stopped.